welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I'm back to do another weekly wrap up. And this one has been busy because one of my year goals was to get more involved in like a, some community engagement. As you've heard me talk before, I fully believe that you only get what you, you only get out what you put in. And that goes for city and community and stuff. And so I've had a, more meetings this week than I typically have had in the past. But they have been fascinating meetings. Both of the items that I finished this week, I finished at the beginning of the week. The first one is I finished Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. And this is my second 2023 read, I believe, that I have finished. Not been reading so many new releases this year. And this was a delight. I frequently say that Sanderson is a hit or miss author for me. Either I start reading and I'm sucked in, or I start reading and I bounce out. This one sucked me in. And I think the setup of doing the story in parts was interesting. It kind of, I think it made the transitions to what each focus for that part of the story was very clear. And I just really like Tress. And I like that we got to know her and see, you know, this is how she operates. This is her way of thinking. She doesn't want to impose on people, but she likes people. She is very social. You know, she's just discovered that she's in love with Charlie and Charlie is in love with her. And then Charlie's parents take him off to go get married, but he promises that he's going to come back and marry her. And then he gets captured by the sorceress. So Tress has to make a decision and she realizes that she can't expect anybody else to do anything about it she has to do something herself if she wants to go save him. And that's where we kind of get to see the beginning of how the story is built. Tress is a nice active character. She knows what she's wanting to do and she is conscious of the decisions she is making. And when she decides to do something, it's then, how do I get this done? Because she's a peasant. She's actually not allowed to leave her island. How is it going to happen that she is able to get off the island and go on the journey that she to save Charlie? So she gets on a ship and then she gets drugged because they think she's something that she's not. So then she's in jail and then that ship is attacked and just the little things of how things are going. And she is such an active participant. So even when a plot device comes her way, she makes a decision about it versus reacting to it. And I love that sort of storytelling. That is what draws me in. I am very much a character reader. If I can't understand why your character is doing what they're doing, I'm not going to be as invested in the book. And I feel like Tress of the Emerald Sea has hit it out of the park. And I'm actually now more interested and curious about the other three secret project books. You know, since Sanderson is a very well-known author, I know it's going to be months before I even get the second one. And that's okay, because if his other ones are like this one, they are going to be worth the wait. And then the second book I finished was Night Music by Tobias Cabrel. This is one of the finalists for the self-published science fiction contest. There are seven. I've already read Melody because it was in my group's original pile. So Night Music is the first one that I am reading as part of this contest. <laughs> and <clears throat> this is a space opera, first contact story, close to home. Something has happened on Mars and Seth, who is a pilot with a private company that is, has established a base on Mars, is part of the group that is selected to go find out what's going on and 
what has happened to our people that were stationed there. The story that follows is very sweet. It, I don't know if there can be such a thing as a cozy sci-fi, but this kind of has that feel. It's a cozy sci-fi, but it's also a hard sci-fi because you get a lot of science. It doesn't shy away from the science terminology. And then you have the first contact at the end. There were some minor things with this one. I felt like the characters were more surface level and there were some gaps of I wasn't sure quite how things happen logically, especially since it, this is more of a hard sci-fi, so it's more giving me the science, and then we had like a jump. I'm like, wait, how did you discover that and that that worked? But overall, I really enjoyed this and definitely would love to see more by Cabral, and especially if he stays with doing a lot of wonder in his sci-fi. I don't think we see enough of that, and I really enjoyed it. Now, on to what I have been currently reading. So this week I started Humans, Beasts, and Ghosts by King Zhang Shu, and this is one of my reads for the May of the Moderns readathon done by Margaret Pinard. This is translated it's by a person of color, and it is a backlist book because I meant to read it last year for this readathon and then didn't, and so it was sitting on my shelf already. Figured this is the perfect time. So this is short stories and essays, which at least at the beginning aren't very long. They're only like a couple pages. But I can already tell that this author likes to do a lot of wordplay. And to the point that he goes so far with his wordplay that his point has been lost. Or it makes me think that the wordplay was the original point. I finally read an essay that I liked yesterday on eating, and that one I found interesting. But it's probably also because I work at the Wick office, where we're talking about eating stuff anyway. So a quote that I liked from this is, it's talking about who is the master of the house. The master of the house, for instance, is not in fact the father who earns the money to support the family, but the newly weaned child sitting and eating contentedly. This fact, needless to say, goes unappreciated in childhood and is one that fathers would surely be unwilling to concede. Think about it. If the belly, to which we make offerings of tea and food, from, from, from dawn to dusk, is not God, then what is? I'm just like, yeah, yeah, I think anybody who has a child and when the child is hungry, the whole world can go up in, up in flames as long as they get something to eat, that, that's all that matters. And then he also talks about how good food is like music, it needs to be very harmonious and bring everything together. So I have found one essay that I liked. I probably am going to finish this after May has finished out, but I am slowly reading this. Then I worked heavily on Crucible of Hell. I know, I know you guys have been like, Rachel, we've been seeing this for months now. That's cool. I have five chapters left at this point. I am finishing it this week. And this talks about the Battle of Okinawa from all sides of combatants. And I think Saul David has done an excellent job of pulling everything together, especially pulling some other history with the atomic bomb like laced in it so you can kind of see the timeline of what's going on. Like I said, finishing this soon. Then I picked up City of Last Chances by Adrian Tchaikovsky. This is a buddy read for a group that I'm doing. I think a lot of people kind of DNF'd it. I'm only two chapters in, so I don't know yet um, how I'm going to feel, but had started this. And then I have also started The Last Gifts of the Universe by Rory August. And that is another of our self-published science fiction contest finalists. And I've already heard great things about this from my group, so I'm very excited. The voice in, of the main character really caught me in that first chapter. I really wanted to just like start binge reading. And so definitely Murray August has done a great hook. 
I'm kind of curious what type of person would take a cat on a ex, you know, like excavating mission or archaeologist mission. What type of cat wants to have to go down into a hole, whether they were wearing a breathing bubble or not? Very interesting. I'm, I'm sure Pumpkin is going to be stealing the show a lot of the time in this book. But that is what I am currently reading. For my writing wrap up, daydreaming. That is what I've been doing this week because that's what I've, I have had time for. It, I know I've shared before that my husband is running for city commission. I knew that was going to be happening this year. I knew that was also going to restrict some of my time for different things. And yeah, so basically I come home from work and he is talking to me about policies and governance meetings, his planks. So I don't always get a lot of just sit down and do my own thing time. I love him and I realize this is how he's going to be because this is not his first time running. So I'm here to support him. This is, he's passionate about this and I wouldn't want to run for city commission. Other media, we finally got from the library Everything Everywhere All at Once. I think that's the correct title. Really popular movie. I had never heard of it until it started being talked about, I think, in relation to the Oscars. And wow, yeah, <laughs> this is definitely a very interesting sci fi. Something I love is that this woman is in her 40s or she's much older 40s 50s i'm not even sure much older her child has grown child's trying to figure out who she is and the mom is still trying to figure out who she is as well and so that was an interesting parallel because i think a lot of times children think oh my parent knows who they are and doesn't realize no adults don't know who they are they finally learn to become just comfortable with who they are and say, this is who I am and I don't care if it makes sense. But that really comes more as an older adult. <laughs> and not every adult falls into that same pattern. So it was interesting to kind of see where she's not satisfied with her life and then she gets to kind of see alternate versions of what could have been. and reevaluate what is actually the most important thing for her and Michelle Yao amazing actress and oh, I forget his name but the little boy data from Goonies I'm like oh oh it's him I haven't seen him in so long he definitely should get more movie roles like he was fantastic so yeah enjoyed that and then I am continuing on with my rewatch of elementary TV show that's basically a retelling of Sherlock Holmes and Watson, but Lucy Liu is Watson. I love her. She's awesome. So that has been my week. For what you can expect here in the future, I have a review for Night Music by Tobias Cabrel coming out soon after this video. And then also you're going to get a tag video from me called Half Human Heroes. It was something I was tagged to do. And it is supporting fellow author tubers who they got together and put together this collection. Three of the people in here I absolutely love. Margaret Pennard, S.D. Houston, and David Wiley. So I'm very much looking forward to doing this tag and then getting this book to read it. I'm not as familiar with all of the other people, so I love that more author tubers are getting together and writing and sharing anthologies and stories. I'm just excited to read more from my fellow author tubers. So that is what you can expect from me here in the future. I hope you guys all have a great day. Thank you. <laughs>